this discussion. So um, remember this discussion from the very beginning when I talked about sufficient, the legislature shall make sufficient sums available for lots, loans, rehabilitation projects, and the operating and administrative expenses of the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. The Nelson case was brought by beneficiaries who basically said that the state had breached its responsibility by not making sufficient sums available for, to DHHL, and the commission breached its responsibility for not asking for sufficient sums. I'm gonna cut to the chase, and in 2012, the Supreme Court found that of the four purposes, so lots, loans, rehabilitation projects, the legislature decides what is sufficient. So we couldn't, the, the court felt that it was not a decision that it could make, that it was a political question and sufficiency was defined by the legislature. So if, if, if it's in, in its wisdom that year, the commission, I mean the legislature felt that $10,000 was sufficient, that's what the, num the definition is. But, back side, back. But this last one that you can just barely see, purpose four, operating and administrative expense, the court felt could be decided as to what is, operate, you know, what is sufficient for operating and administrative expense. So it, it sent the case back to the circuit court. There was a hearing held, um, and Judge Castagnetti at the circuit court um, it's a very good decision for beneficiaries, very good decision, very clear decision. Um, she defined what is operating in administrative expenses in her, dis in her findings of fact, which is very similar to what the state actually holds as operating in administrative expenses. And she felt that, and she, she also um, ordered that in that year, more than 28 million was what was sufficient uh, for the operating and administrative expenses of Hawaiian homelands. Now, she kind of amended her decision because the legislature felt that the court had overstepped its bounds. <laughs> um, we fast forward, the case was appealed and it went to the Supreme Court. And the decision of the Supreme Court, which, and I kid you not, it does say that what the Webster definition of, the, or the dictionary definition of sufficiency doesn't apply in this case. Um, so what the court found was that the circuit court had overstepped its bounds and what was sufficient was 1.3 to 1.6 million dollars, which is what it cost the department to operate in 1978 <laughs> times an inflation factor. So oh. it's, a, um, it's a really hard decision for us, but it is what it is. Um, that doesn't mean that the legislature cannot appropriate more. So um, let me go through, first of all, what this decision has meant for DHHL. Okay, I'm gonna take a look back, but I just wanna say that as we look back, and you know, um, I believe every chair and Hawaiian Homes Commission is trying to do their best for the trust. We can't always know the factors that are at play when they make their decision. And I truly believe that every chair starts with good intentions, but there are always unintended consequences. So I say that because I don't intend to Monday morning quarterback any former chair. Okay, next slide. So I know it might be hard to see from the back, but the main thing is to see kind of the sizes of the bars. So at the very bottom, it says, it starts at 2010, 11, 12, 13, and then you start seeing color in 2014. Okay, that's not an error. We didn't ask for any funding. In terms of our general funding, this pays for our salaries and expenses, uh, our operating expenses, turning on the lights, travel, all of that. Um, so out of our general funds, which you and I as taxpayers pay, that pays the salaries of state employees, DHHL did not ask for, so we did not receive general funding in 2010, 11, 12, and 13. In 2014, which is the first budget we did after the Nelson case in May of 2012, um, you start seeing the blue bars, right? And our, and our ask was between 20 and 30 million for operating and administrative expenses. So you see kind of blue bars slowly step up. 
And then you'll see the kind of like, looks like green to me, but it's actually orange. Um, the, that's what the governor requested. And then you'll see like a little gray bar next to it. That's what the legislature funded. So you see how it starts to step up, right? To where basically in 2018 and 2019, we're getting 25 million from the legislature. That's based on the governor's number. That's not our number. That's the governor's request based on the state's definition of operating and administrative expense, but is a direct correlation to this case. What does that mean for you as a beneficiary? It means that we don't have to spend what we earn off, the, off, off of the homelands to pay my salary. It's a dollar for dollar thing. So in these years that we've gotten more resources, we've been able to put their earnings off of available lands back into development of lots, which is what the Constitutional Convention um, attendees wanted. That's why they said, shall make sufficient sums. I wanted to just um, note, you see this big jump between 2017 and the blue bars? Um, that was a result of us engaging with the beneficiary leaders of all of our homesteads in what we call a Puvalu discussion to um, incorporate their request of their community. So Bokahui, who's in the back, um, you know, Kanahili, um, KCDC, Kapolei Community Development Corporation, they all have ideas, I mean, they, they all, each of these communities have their own vision, and that's a whole other PowerPoint presentation in terms of what's going on in the homestead. It's really amazing the self-determination that's occurring at the community level on the homesteads. Just an, just an amazing thing that's happening for our people. But in any case, when we incorporated that as part of the sufficient sums ask, you see that it jumps again in terms of the need. So that's on the operating side. On the CIP side, um, the blue bars are what we asked for, um, but we were getting 30 million, you see this line across, the 30 million a year we were getting from the legislature as part of the land claim settlement. Uh, and so that le the legislature was making that, um, that, that was kind of like a, like a placeholder and it was a settlement, so it should have been something that the commission um, would use to invest for the future. <coughs> However, that was really what we were also using to fund our CIP as we were moving forward. So you'll see um, there are years when the governor's request, so the, again, the blue is DHHL, the orange is, or green, is what the governor requested, and the light gray is what the legislature funded. You'll see that in some years we did get additional resources of capital improvement projects, CIP. This is the stuff that we do all of our development with. Um, and then it drops off, right? And then you start to see, again, an increase in 2017. And then tw 2018, we have this amazing thing happen where we got just a lot of resources from the legislature. And um, not as many in 2019. Governor is asking for us consistently. Um, however, what happened in 2018, I understand from the appropriators is that, uh, or the Finance and Ways and Means Committee, is that they're front-ending, giving us more money because they want to make sure that we can spend it, uh, get it out the door in time. So this is just kind of a snapshot, because when you, next slide, when you see what we actually asked for, you see the blue bars? That's what we asked for, for our capital improvement projects as compared to what I kind of like narrowed in because it's not insignificant. We got like $40 million from the legislature, but it's expensive, like I was saying. Next slide. So um, the, it doesn't show as well, but when we work on our ask for the, for the, to the legislature, what we start with is all of the needs. So that's what it says at the top, developing the ask. So we have the regional priorities that come out of the Puvalu, addressing the waiting lists, the repair and maintenance of existing subdivisions, loans, rehabilitation projects, administration and operating expenses, debt service, which actually OHA is helping us pay, and then managing trust resources, all of the land issues that I was talking about. So that's like all of our needs. Then we cut it by, when I say cut it, we kind of recategorize it by the four purposes loans, lots, loans, rehabilitation projects, 
and administrative and operating expenses. Same ask, just defined differently. And then we have to define it again based on how the state budget talks. So we, we take that same ask and we cut it by the state budget request, which is operating budget, capital improvements budget, CIP budget. But it's always the same ask. Okay, next slide. So this is what it looked like for the last fiscal year that we're, the current fiscal year that we're in. Lots, loans, rehabilitation projects, one, two, three. We asked for $262 million at the top. Um, we got, the governor requested on our behalf, 15 million. Now, I keep, you know, I keep in mind that um, the governor and the legislators, the commission does not have the burden that the governor and the legislators have of having to balance our ask against the entire needs of the state. But just so that you know, if, any, if, if anyone were to ever ask, well, what does Hawaiian Homes need? There's a number. <laughs> so, lots, loans, rehabilitation projects for fiscal year 2019, 262 million, governor provided 15. We got 14.4 million from the legislature. Purpose four, operating and administrative expenses. Now this includes both salaries, expenses, but it also includes repair and maintenance of our existing infrastructure, cleaning drainage ditches, you know, cleaning, taking care of the roads, all of that. Um, 70.7 million that we asked for. Governor gave us, requested 35.1. We received 28.1 million from the legislature. Um, so the total, 333 million was our sufficient sums budget ask, 50 million the governor provided, and 42 million was what the legislature provided. And this on the bottom is the same cut, but just based on how they speak at the legislature. General fund request, we asked for 48.5, governor asked for 25.1, we received 25.3. Part of that is actually Bo, your operating GIA. <laughs> um, the bond request, we asked for 200 CIP, we asked for 284, governor asked 25, and we got 17.2 million from the legislature. So where we need your help this session is making sure, if nothing else, that we get at least the 25.1 million for our operating budget. You're still short um, 240 million dollars. Yes, but if we can make sure we at least get that. More is always better in this case. Next slide. Okay. So, moving forward, because uh, I got the five minute sign and I want to make sure we have some time, but there are new and old ideas that we're looking at. So good ideas that we just haven't, um, you know, just good ideas that we haven't necessarily moved on and to get lands out the door. And so those include more vacant lots, as we talked about, um, the subsistence ag lots that I spent some time talking up about, Kuleana homesteading, which is in our rules. Basically, this is for areas where we're unlikely to develop in the near future, but people want to go and live there and are willing to take the lot with very little infrastructure. Um, the one area we have this is Kahikinui. We're looking at the rent with option to purchase in Kona. We just did, finished ours, the last project that we, the one and only project that we did was in Kapolei. So this will allow for a family to reside in the home for 15 years as a renter and then purchase um, after the 15th year. And Antihome here knows a lot about, um, if you're interested in that, what it takes to do that kind of uh, converting to a home ownership. Multifamily condos, we're working on the rules to allow us to do this right now. And then um, as part of that, and if you're an applicant, you may have gotten a letter. Um, we provide home buyer education at no cost to, to you as a beneficiary, which we encourage you to take advantage of. Because we have had families that they've, they've gone through the program, they've gotten ready, and they just, they're just, their name just didn't get called, but they were ready, so they ended up buying you know, fee simple condos, et cetera, on the outside. And so we're constantly trying to find new ways to help our beneficiaries. Next slide. And then as it relates to shelter, which is different than an award of a lease, um, we are looking at multifamily rentals for that project um, 
in Moilili, which is the old Bolodrome site. And then supplemental dwelling units. If you are a lessee and you have a fairly large lot, um, we are looking at the rules to allow you to build an additional dwelling unit on your homestead to provide housing for your family. We call it, yeah, also, some people call it accessory dwelling units, so we're working on the rules for that, for supplemental. And I believe that's the last slide. So I'll leave this up. If you're interested in the presentation, Cedric's contact information is there. Um, I can take a couple questions. Ka'imo. Um, knowing that the development 